Hey guys, Nick here and this is my Linux experiment and in today's video I'd like to try and debunk a few Linux myths uh, since it's been three months since I started my Linux experiment and uh, well I wanted to uh, tell people about a few things you hear when you tell them you're switching to Linux and uh, try and uh, give an answer to them. So let's start. The first myth you hear often is Linux is hard to use. Well, no, that is simply untrue. Linux is not hard to use. Uh, the graphical interface is, in many in many respects, uh, easier to use than a Windows uh, OS or a Mac OS. It all depends on what you're used to. Uh, GNOME and KDE and uh, Pantheon for elementary OS are especially all right as of now. Uh, there's a really nice uh, complement of applications. Uh, they are really ergonomical and easy to use once you've understood how they're supposed to work. So the miss is simply untrue. It is not hard, it is just different. Second myth you hear often is that there is no software on Linux. Usually when people say that about Linux, they're just talking about proprietary software. And even that isn't true today, because you can pretty much do anything you want on Linux these days. You can edit video with Caden Live or Lightworks, you can edit graphical images with GIMP, Inkscape, you can do 3D with Blender. Admittedly, it is pretty hard to learn, but once you've used it, it is a really awesome software. There is LibreOffice, which is awesome and almost in feature parity with Microsoft Office for most people, Audacity for audio production, and plus, as per proprietary software, you've got Skype, you've got Slack, you've got Spotify, you've got Dropbox, you've got Chrome, you've got drivers for NVIDIA, AMD, you've got Steam, uh, and you've got plenty of software like OBS, Firefox. There's plenty of choice. There is probably much more choice of software on Linux than there is on Mac OS, for example. Third myth is that Linux has less performance. This one is mostly untrue. It might be true, especially for graphics cards. Uh, since drivers are not as well optimized for Linux as they are for Windows or Mac OS. You don't have less performance. The performance today is sufficient for 90% of users. They will no never notice the difference in performance in graphical power. Linux can't game. But it couldn't be less true today. Uh, today there is Steam, there are some very recent AAA games, there is Wine to play a slew, gigantic portion of the Windows older games library. I do all my gaming on Linux, and for the games I like, and I insist on the games I like, I have no need of a Windows partition. It all depends on the type of games you want to play. If you're into the latest Call of Duty, the latest Battlefield, yes, they are not gonna work, even though Wine might be able to run them. But if you like older games, and if you like strategy games, and if you like indie games, and if you like a few one-year-old AAA games, Linux is perfectly able to game and with very good performance. Last myth I'd like to tackle is the you need the command line to use Linux. Well, no, no, you don't. Today, you don't. There's graphical interfaces for many, many, many things. Everything you'd want to do, you can do it with a graphical user interface. If you want to edit files, if you want to edit configuration files, if you want to move files, if you want to, to install software, you don't need the command line. It is a useful tool. It is a useful tool provided by default for every Linux distribution and it might be quicker sometimes so that's why many tutorials include steps using the command line and that's probably what is giving this impression to outsiders of the Linux community. Uh, they look at tutorials at how to do stuff, they see command line and they're like okay so this system is not ready for mainstream use. But all the things you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis is available in some form, some graphical user interface. I personally love the power of the command line, but I don't need it, I just enjoy using it. So since I started using Linux again, and especially elementary OS, these myths have proven untrue. Do you have other myths or preconceived notions on Linux that you hear a lot and that you'd like to be debunked? Well, just leave a comment down below and we'll talk about them. In the meantime, this has been my Linux experiment and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!